everyone, I'm Leandra Riley, and welcome to the PWBA. With 19 titles among them, Dana Miller Mackey and Anne Marie Dugan are familiar visitors to your television screen, but our other three qualifiers share 12 titles. In fact, all five of our stepladder finalists have won one event in 1998. Now, let me bring in my broadcast partner, Jan Schmidt, who was just recently inducted into the Illinois Women's State Hall of Fame. Congratulations on that. Let's get to our stepladder, though. Number five qualifier, Michelle Feldman. Her title came in Louisville, Kentucky. Michelle is just happy to be here after leading most of the week. She barely hung on to make the show last night, but I think she's happy to be bowling Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Last time they met on TV, the big 300 game. And that was right here in the state of Virginia. How exciting it was. Well, you mentioned Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Her last title came in Orlando, Florida, and this is her seventh TV appearance of 98. Most of those seven shows, however, came just recently. She's really come on strong. She's made four of the last five telecasts. Now, there's more to Carolyn's story than meets the eye. And for that, we go to our second analyst on this telecast, 30 time titleist Lisa Wagner, who's with Carolyn Doran Ballard right now. Carolyn, you've been battling an enemy lately the 7 10 split. It's the bookends of the pin deck. Uh, it's already cost you at least two titles. Last week it appeared against Kim Kennedy, and just last night it haunted you once again when you moved from third to fourth in the last game of the tournament. Do you think it's just plain bad luck, or is it a problem with the shot you're making? Well, it's funny you say haunting with Halloween coming up, but um, I think it's a little bit of both. There's sometimes I, I, I felt like I made an okay shot and left in. And I was like, all right, well, it could have been better. I know last week and last night I felt like I threw it really good and still left it. So hopefully a good friend of mine who I used to room with a long time ago told me that if I just hang in there, eventually all the luck will turn around, and you never know. I could go win, win, win. That's right. Good luck tonight, Carolyn. You bet. Thanks. All right, let's hope that that 710 bug doesn't fight this evening. Let's continue up the ladder. Our number three qualifier is Anne Marie Dugan. Her last victory, Huntsville, Alabama. Anne Marie has made three consecutive telecasts. She's back on top of her game. She proved it more than ever this week. She played a tighter line to the pocket, something that is not her A game, and she did it very well. Our number two qualifier is the first of two lefties, Dee Dee Davidson, whose last title came in Fairview Heights, Illinois. Dee Dee's really having a great year. It's her sixth show this year. That's the best ever in her career, and that despite the fact that she missed the last three events with a back injury. So let's hope she gets healthy and stays healthy. And our number one qualifier is Dana Miller Mackey. Her last title, Jacksonville, Florida. That was early this year. She opened the year big. She made four of the first eight shows. Then a wrist injury hindered her performance, but she changed some pitches, relaxed the wrist, and she's back up on top. All right, she'll have to adopt the old wait and see attitude as the top qualifier because Michelle Feldman is ready to take on Carolyn Doran Ballard in our opening match. And you see Carolyn Dorn Ballard and Michelle Feldman shaking hands. Carolyn Dorn Ballard is the number four qualifier, so she said, Michelle, guess what? You're bowling first. <laughs> Wants Michelle to get that opening shot out there. Could history repeat itself? Nice way to start things off here at AMF Hanover Lanes. North Richland Hills, Texas is home for this woman now. She grew up in New Jersey, but when she married Del Ballard Jr., they moved to Texas. Well, personally, I think she'll be out for revenge in this match. What do you think, Lise? Absolutely. Jan, I agree with you completely. Come on. Coming up a little bit high, a little left to target on that shot. But it's makeable. And it's the first frame, too. Let's get those jitters out of the way. Carolyn just wants to make good shots on the show. That's what she's talked about all week. Oh. And she marks in the first frame, stays close to Feldman. Crossing over our television pair this day, our lanes 17 and 18. Very colorful house here at AMF Hanover Lanes. Lots of pink and blue banners hanging above the lanes. It's a very roomy center. There's two sides to this house, 28 lanes on one side, 28 lanes on the other side with a big snack bar in between. It's really nice. It looks like a split house instead of a very long house. Mm -hmm. Well, 
it was the seven the first time, and it was the ten the uh, second time. Now here you can t see where the crowd is. That is the snack area right behind them, and further behind them are the other 28 lanes that you mentioned. That was a good aggressive shot by Carolyn. Six pin flew around the ten. You're going to see here that she's going to change balls. She's going to spare ball. Cut down the hook, go straight at it. And again, two marks as Michelle Feldman steps up on lane 18. Did Michelle's grandparents make it here? Have you seen them? She said they were driving up. They are here, at least as not in head. Gary and Linda Feldman drove nine hours to get here to watch this match. From Skinnyapolis, New York. Well, there goes the 300 game. Okay, I want to see Carolyn's face. Is she breathing? <laughs> Sure. And she goes straight at the 10, clears it. Earlier, Jan Schmidt spoke with both Carolyn and Michelle about what happens if Michelle bowls a perfect 300 game again. Uh, Carolyn is going to be a mammoth person because I'm going to look at her coming off the approach and she's going to be 6'5" probably about 300 pounds, and I'm just going to duck because a Rosenbeck's probably going to fly at me. Well, she doesn't have to worry about that now. <laughs> Gee, do you think she deliberately missed that shot earlier so that she wouldn't have to worry about a 6'5", Carolyn? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, I think any 6 or 7 bagger thrown at Carolyn, I'd be ducking. <laughs> because it seems like lately so many people have strung strikes at her. You know, Lisa, as much as I want to make a show, I don't think I want to make it if I have to bowl against her. <laughs> I wouldn't want to throw strikes, and I don't want to lose, so, you know. Two spares. Come on! Come on! Yes! Baby. That's, That's right. right! You see the X cards flying. Those are for Carolyn Doran Ballad. That is her first strike in this opening match. She is a number four qualifier. This is her fourth show of this swing, her seventh show of the year. You know, I really wasn't sure if Carolyn was going to get to this show. It was very close last night, and she was kind of hanging around eighth, ninth position. She threw a six count on a fill ball against Cheryl Daniels, and it made her, uh, Cheryl had the possibility to go ahead and go three strikes to tie her, and that made Carolyn so angry. She came back and shot 279, 259, 215 the next three to get herself right in. Oh, yeah! Two in a row for Carolyn Doran Ballard. And like I said, we uh, are happy to see that this is a very, very competitive match here at Hanover Lanes. The AMF Gold Cup is brought to you by AMF Bowling Worldwide, the largest owners and operators of bowling centers in the world and one of the leading makers of bowling products. AMF always means fun. And by Budweiser and Bud Light, the official beers of bowling. And by MasterCard, there are some things in life money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. A couple of our bowlers received some honors earlier. Bev Ortner Award for the 1997-98 National High Series went to Jackie Miscavige. She's on the right of your screen. Her three-game series was 877 in Van Wert, Ohio. And then Pearl Keller, it was announced, would be inducted into the WIBC Hall of Fame. In fact, Pearl Keller is standing by with our Lisa Wagner. Congrat congratulations, Pearl. I know you are the newest inductee to the WIBC Hall of Fame. How's it feel? Well, I'm very pleased and then honored, of course, to be elected into the WIBC Hall of Fame, uh, especially since it's the greatest um, recognition any woman involved in bowling can receive. Congratulations, Pearl. We're here to draw the first name, first bowling center first, then we're going to draw the name a little bit later to the Bud Frame Hall of Fame tournament. Pearl, pull me out a winner. And the bowling center is... How ironic. The Cherry Bowl from Rockford, Illinois. We'll be getting to the name shortly. Back to the action. All right, and that bud frame means that a winner from that bowling center will win a trip to the 
Bowling Museum and Bowling Hall of Fame, and we'll get a chance to compete for some money. But right now, let's look at Michelle Feldman, who it's a one-pin ball game. Two strikes for her and a score. Sends up her first three matches and now some trouble. Crossing over almost to the Brooklyn side, leaving the 310. I talked to Michelle before the match. She led until yesterday. She said she had on the lanes what she had yesterday, which was not a good condition for her. She was going to change her surfaces and see if she could get something to play on today. Her third television appearance of the year. She, she felt she bowled lucky in the uh, last game of the evening last night as she waits now for a re-rack, which you're allowed to do. They're trying to... Well, actually, the pin's not... This, the rack came down and swept her spare, so they have to respot it. She had left the 310, the rack swept it and put a full rack of pins up. So they have to put the 310 back up and she'll shoot it now. Is that nerve wracking that happens? You know, not really. You do get used to it. It is initially because you know, oh my God, wait again. But you, you got used to it. Happens quite often. Didn't phase her one bit. She marks again, this time in the fourth frame. Trails now by nine as she crosses over. You mentioned her being lucky. You're right. Uh, it was not a pretty game in position round. As I said, she fell from first to fifth. She shot 226, but did carry a couple of Brooklyn's, a couple of trip two pins. So she was just trying to hang on, but she did it with poise and style. Brooklyn again. But it got the job done. Two spares, two strikes. That's how Carolyn Doran Ballard opened this match. She's a number four qualifier in our stepladder finals. This is her seventh appearance of the year. She does have one title. That came in Orlando. Well, she's now up by nine pins, working on a double. She can go take the lead to 19 with the strike here. Overall for the career, she has four titles to her name. She's happy. All right, we asked the question, Michelle Feldman, what happens if she bowled a 300 game? So we had to put it to Carolyn Doran Ballard. Well, it won't be anything new. I won't be surprised because everybody does on TV, number one. Number two, hopefully I'll be keeping up with her. But if I'm way out of it by the ninth frame by like 50 or 60 pins, I'm just going to pack up my balls and leave in the ninth and tenth frame and let her finish on her own. <laughs> Tongue firmly implanted in cheek when she made those comments. <laughs> She was teasing Michelle last night, saying, I'm just going to let her finish out. I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to encourage her. I'm not going to help her. <laughs> 300 out of fact. One more. One more. Pull up. She needed it to move over just one more. It did. Didn't throw, throw that one too good. Lisa, what do you think? She got a, a little bit left of her target, I believe. And there's some conditioner there, so she bumped up against it, and the ball did not finish. Leaving the 2-5 here, she's going to use her spare ball, try to cover both pins with the ball. As yeah, someone's cell phone. Cell phone, and you could see how that was uh, distracting. Lisa Wagner, this is her release from behind. Well, as we said before, I think she did get a little bit left of target, and you see the ball just skidding about a good five, seven feet longer than it has been. It did not pick up a roll. Back to five action. Two, two. Good break on that spare. Yeah. 17 pins, now the difference between Feldman and Doran Ballard. Her average in 1998, just under 210. Nice smooth release. You came back over to that Kirkland side. That wow. She's snapping back. Yeah, coming high. She's going with a little more surface than she did before. A little duller ball trying to tame down the hook maybe a bit, get a little earlier roll, but it's not helping right now. This is exactly what we saw last night. Had a lot of hook, and then if she tried to get it way right, which she usually can do, it didn't come back. And you can see the frustration on her face. Ten and eight in match play. We might point out this week only 18 players went to the finals. Only 18 games of match, but now only 24. She went straight at it and only picked off the 10. 
And you can see the frustration building on her face. She just has to collect herself. Well, she tried to flatten it out, and the ball just slid, missing the six pin. And the deficit climbs to 29. So what is she saying to herself now, Jan? She's saying, I don't have a clue. This is what she did last night. You can see that 29 pin deficit. When she finished the seventh game, she sat down and said to herself, I don't have a clue. Don't know where to throw, don't know what to do. Well, she figured it out real quick right there in the seventh frame. And we'll be back with the continuation of our first match between Michelle Feldman and Carolyn Doran Ballard. But first, these messages. Gold Cup in Richmond, Virginia. We're here to pick the first name for the Bud Frame Hall of Fame tournament and a trip to St. Louis, Missouri. And Pearl has picked seven. Looks like uh, David Percophile Jr. David Percophile Jr. You're going to St. Louis. Back to bowling. And his name was drawn from the Cherry Bowl in Rockford, Illinois, which is where he submitted his entry. In the fifth frame, I believe he had to bowl a strike. He did that, and then his name went into the hopper, and the hopper came here, and now it was heard on ESPN. That's right, and if you haven't signed up yet for the Bud Frame Hall of Fame, you have the rest of the month of October. Sign up. Your name will go into this bin, and there'll be drawings next week and at the Samstown Invitational. You are looking at Carolyn Doran Ballard right now as she leads Michelle Feldman by 29 pins. She is ready to bowl in the seventh, her maximum score, should she go off the page, 257. Get a score in the Come six. on! Yes, baby! That was a beautiful shot. You could see the ball roll off her hand. Ball picked up very early. Carolyn holds the ball about chest high. Her knees are bent. Watch her release here. Gets the ball well out on the lane, and look at the finish position. Strong follow through, and look at the ball. Take a turn, good rotation, and drives hard into the pocket. Very strong game. Not the most powerful release, but she does the same thing over and over. Come on, come on. Yes! And very consistent ball right there. All the events she entered in 1997, continuing with that success in 1998. There you see the maximum score, 257 for Carolyn Doran Ballard. But now it is Michelle Feldman's turn. Her maximum score is 228. She trails now by 39. Well, Michelle said last night that she thought Carolyn would probably try to get revenge, and uh, she was ready for it, expecting it. I was very, very happy. Yes. Now she has a strike in the eighth to go with it. Two in a row. Michelle's trying to make something half happen out there. She has a four-step approach. Watch this backswing. Very high over the top of her head. Look at how her wrist flattens out. Now she'll cup it again as she starts to come through. Look at the cupped wrist. This is how she generates all the revolution on the ball, the turn, and the power. And all that lively pin action, we should add that uh, she led in this tournament in the second, third, and fourth rounds. Oh, boy, slipped right over to number 10 and took it out, Lisa. I absolutely love those shots. That is the shot that can get a bowler pumped up more than anything in bowling. So it's a turkey and sit down for Michelle Feldman as Carolyn Dorn steps up with a two-bagger and a 19-pin advantage. Well, not only can those shots pump you up, but it sometimes can affect your opponent, although Carolyn just pays attention to what she needs to do. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's not a real aggressive shot. Didn't really catch that ball. She's been staying real firm behind the ball. She's been turning the ball more than I've ever seen her do it before. That ball off her hand, a little bit weak, didn't quite catch it. The shot was pretty weak off her hand, it's not rotating. See, it never really turned over, she just didn't get a good release. Oh! 
Oh, oh man. And you are looking at Carolyn Dorn Ballard's husband, Del Ballard Jr., 13 pro titles for him. And he is acting as our scorekeeper as I put my hand on his shoulder. Thank you, Del, for uh, keeping score for us here in the booth. <laughs> he said any time, I think you heard him. Carolyn's going to need a double here in the 10th to shut out Michelle Feldman. Michelle can shoot 228 if she goes out off the sheet. Two strikes and six pins puts this match out of reach. But Carolyn Doran Ballard needs to get those two strikes first. Carolyn took a re-rack here. Allowed two. I think that's a, as much to take a little bit of time and settle herself down after that last shot because she knows that she did not throw it good. Mm -hmm. You mean you mean you've done that, Lisa? Oh boy, I've. I've, well, I'm not going to tell anybody, but <laughs> I've stalled many times. <laughs> there you see the maximum score, 233 for Carolyn, should she go off the page. Come on. Hit it! Oh, yeah! got it. Number seven collapsed after she shouted, hit it. I didn't know if that was going to carry. Now, this is a close match. Her maximum score is 228. 233 was the number four, Carolyn Dorn Ballard. You're going to see this ball pick up a good, solid roll with the pins, sending the five into the four, and a big cluster over at the seven. Look at the reaction. She knows she needed it. One more and six pins for the win. Well, you know how she feels about seven anyway, and ten for that matter, collectively or alone. I think this shot right here goes a long way to set the tone for her evening if she goes on and wins this match. One more. Come on! Yeah, got it. Good got good it easily. Right no dramatics. Now she just needs pin count. Six. Yeah, a few dramatics out of Carolyn, though. Yes. <laughs> Boy, was that a great shot. That was an awesome shot. She went right at it. She had good rotation. Now, once we saw her hit a six, that was back in the ninth frame. She had six and then spared. But six would be enough to wrap it up. Come on. Close as a door. The three-bagger shuts down Michelle Feldman as Carolyn Doran Ballard hangs on to four and climbs the ladder where she will face Anne-Marie Dugan as Michelle Feldman retires in fifth place and $7,000 richer. Welcome back to the AMF Gold Cup in Richmond, Virginia. We're here to pick the second name in the Bud Frame Hall of Fame tournament. And the second bowler is from second bowl center, Brunswick Dover Rama in Dover, Delaware. We'll be back in a few frames to pick the name. We're ready for the second match. Back to you, Leandra and Jan. Thank you very much. You're looking at Anne-Marie Dugan and Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Anne-Marie is the number three qualifier. Told Carolyn she's bowling first. She defeated Michelle Feldman 233 to 228. Feldman finishing with a six bagger, but too much, too little, too late. So Carolyn climbs the ladder. You can see she's already defeated Anne-Marie Dugan in match play 226 to 216. Well, those shots in the 10th were big for Carolyn. She's going to be aggressive the rest of the night now. It's time to fall down. She asked for it to hook a lot, and it hooked just enough. Our first opportunity to see Anne Marie Dugan. She is a 15 time titleist. She's from Edmond, Oklahoma. A 15 year pro. Oh. Softly done, but she'll take it. That was some interesting pin carry there. Well, let's take a look at our Bud Frame Hall of Fame tournament. The first bowling center that we picked was the Cherry Bowl in Rockford, Illinois. And the first bowler that will win a trip to St. Louis is David Perky Pyle. I hope I'm saying that right, Perky Pyle Jr. And he will get a trip to St. Louis along with a companion. And they get to see the Hall of Fame. They get to compete for some cash. They get to go to the bowling museum. Sounds like a fun time in St. Louis. Emory Dugan's second shot. 
Nothing but perfection. A light hit seemed to be carrying. And there you see the numbers. This is the 233 to 228 score for Carolyn Dorn Ballot as she defeated Michelle Feldman in the opening match. She climbs the ladder now. Her career earnings, 423 plus. She's looking to move up to number three if she can oust Dugan. Come on. Yeah! That looks very much on the nose to me. That was certainly high, Leandra. But a good break, tripped out the forepin. A little bit left. She's really aggressive with this shot, though, and watch it start to finish. Coming up high, head pin off the wall, taking out the four and the seven. She came light the last shot, so was real aggressive with that one. Well, since we have nothing but perfection here, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to remind everyone that if you bowl a perfect 300 game on television, which she is doing right now at this point, she gets $50,000 from MasterCard. And I hear them back in the vault right now, loosening the lock. One more. There's the jinx. Close the vault, slam the door. No perfect game for Carolyn Dorn Ballard, but Anne Marie Dugans is still alive. Two strikes and hopefully a spare here for Carolyn. You'll see the ball go up a little bit high here. She gets a good break. Tripped out the 4 7 once again. Did leave the six pin, but easy spare for Carolyn. I thought it was a good shot off her hand. Threw the ball really crisp, and I thought it would hold pocket. I agree All with right. you. You saw her last title was a Greater Orlando Classic. That was back in March. She would like to end that drought. The last title for this woman, Anne Marie Dugan, is even longer. She won in Huntsville, Alabama. And that was back in February. Again, all five of our step letter finalists have won a title in 1998. None has won a title, however, in the fall swing. Wow. Three in a row. There's her husband, Pat Dugan, cheering her on. She is really getting the light mixers. That's three in a row that way. Barely touching the head pin. You know who's sitting next to Pat Dugan are his and her, the stepchildren, Patrick and Kelly. They are twins and they are sitting right next to Pat Dugan and cheering their stepmom on. They had about an hour's drive to get here. They're near the Williamsburg, Virginia area. And Pat Dugan said, come on down kids and support Anne Marie. And they are. Well, they were here during the week, too, when Anne Marie said it helped her from getting down on herself, just having them here. That's four, and there you see the daughter, that's Kelly, and to her right, your left on the screen, that's Patrick, the 16-year-old twins. And the woman on the other side is their mom, and that's Pat Dugan's former husband. And you know what Anne Marie said? She said everything's cool in that relationship, so. As we look now at Carolyn Doran Ballard. She just needs to keep making the shots she's been making and hope she carries. Come on. Yes. That's a better shot. Started it straighter up the lane. Didn't pull it quite so much. But as you were saying before, that time she did stay up behind the ball, good, strong, and firm. She does have a tendency once in a while to get a little bit uh, sluggish with it, like you were mentioning before on the one shot last game. Uh, that time she, she stayed very firm through it. Anne Marie Dugan, perfect through four. Carolyn Doran Ballard, three strikes and one spare. And that's good bowling. She's down by 21. That's discouraging. 21 events, 20 caches. 17 top 24. She's, she's having a really good Come year. On. She doesn't like something. I want to. Yeah. Oh, did that slide over and take things out for her? Four out of five frames with strikes in it for Carolyn Doran Ballard. What do we call this, a waltz? I call it the Dick Weber special. I get <laughs> a lot of these. I think Dick Weber kind of patented that shot, the <laughs> four into the five. She likes it. <laughs> well, Dick Weber, AMF staff member, he, his spirit's here knocking those pins down. Dick Weber is just a legend. Anne Marie Duke has become a legend of her own but is unable to knock out the 10, and there ends her string at four. She's going to change balls here to shoot the spare. Using a spare ball this week, there you see her career earnings. 720000 And that puts her number five on the all-time list. <laughs> 
Oh, she converts the spear quite easily, and now it is a 10-pin match between Anne-Marie Dugan and Carolyn Doran Ballard. Don't go away. The excitement continues in Richmond, Virginia. We're back at the AMF Gold Cup in Richmond, Virginia. We're here to pick the second name in the Bud Frame Hall of Fame tournament. The first center was the second center was Dover Rama from Dover, Delaware. Number four, Donald Mansfield. Donald Mansfield, you're going to St. Louis. Back to the match. While we were away, here's what happened on the scoreboard. Carolyn Dorn Ballard was up, was up by uh, about 10 pins at one point. Now she's down by 22, and here's what happened. Missed this four pin, pulled it left. Thought it would slide. It has been all week, but it continued to go left. And Anne-Marie, being the professional she is, jumped right on that open. This is the seventh frame. Dead flush, and now the eighth frame. Same thing, beautiful shot, coming in light off the wall. So that explains why Carolyn Doran Ballard trails by 22 pins. Her maximum score is 246 as she steps up in the eighth frame after an open frame in the seventh. Settles on quite nicely. Mark Strong in the eighth. There's a max score for Anne Marie Dugan, a 268 versus the 246. But again, both women would have to go off the page to reach those numbers. Well, Carolyn shook it off. You heard her say, All right, back on it. If I know Carolyn, there's one thing she hates to do, we all do, is Mrs. Spare, but she's an excellent spare shooter. Needs to set up this strike in the ninth. I know she wants to say hi to Big G and Marianne. That'd be George and Marianne, her parents, back home rooting her on. Four national, three regional titles. Come on, roll up and hit. Yes! Roll up and hit and it does, so it's a two-bagger. As you look at Del Ballard's reaction. <laughs> And now Carolyn will just focus on what she has done right, and Anne-Marie Dugan will try to extend her string of two. A 12-pin difference. Well, Anne-Marie has it in her hands. She could shut out Carolyn here at the 10th frame. And that's how you start it. Now, earlier, Jan had a chance to talk with Anne-Marie Dugan and asked her about this new video that she has produced on bowling lessons for women. Well, Jan, I got together with my coaches, my husband, Fred Borden and Jerry Edwards, and we wanted to do something for women. It's something I've always wanted to do. It's a tape directed for women only, because women's ha women have special needs and concerns about their bowling that I don't think anyone is really directed. And hopefully, I think we did a really good job with it. I'm really proud of it, and I'm really excited for it to be out on the market. Left the 10, the door is open. Well, she needs to spare it and strike here, basically, to shut out Carolyn. Your spare strike would give her 247. Best Carolyn can do is 246. First needs to spare. You know, we talked about that video that she had done, and there's an 800 number if you want to order the video. 1-800-426-8823. She missed the spare. Goodness. Did something just... Same, same thing happened to Carolyn. Oh my. The door has just opened up. Two Fun. strikes for Carolyn Doran Ballard and Anne Marie Dugan cannot win. Oh my goodness. A strike spare by Carolyn Doran Ballard equals a tie. Oh boy. Of course, yeah. obviously, it depends on what Anne Marie Dugan does. You know, I'm sure Carolyn wow. was sitting there thinking she lost. What, yes. Lisa, you're yes. huffing and puffing, made it back up here, but uh, Carolyn's been on the other end of that, making the shot and getting the bad break or making a mistake at the end. This time she was sitting down watching it happen. Well, I think she had to be thinking, I, I probably lost this match because Amory is a good spare shooter, just like Carolyn. Now she has to regroup, focus. She does need the first hit here. <laughs> On the nose, that, that was a bad Four shot. shot. Two games. Bad, bad, bad. Very, 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 very bad. And Marie, bad you see the big, the big sigh of relief from her. I think that shot right there was a result of fast feet. I, I, she was in a race there. Well, that's something she talked about. Something she worked on slowing her feet down. 
So, Carolyn Doran Ballard retires in fourth place. She will cash an $8,000 paycheck. Anne Marie Dugan, who qualified third, gets a shot at number two. And we'll be back with Ask a Pro. Now it's time for one of my favorite segments of the telecast when we have you writing a question and ask the pros. This one came via email. G. David writes, is there a limit to how many balls a player may use during match play? And is there a limit to the number of balls that may be kept on the rack during a game? Well, we put that question to Corpus Christi's Shanna Ray, who's ranked 25th in the world. Shanna? Hi, thanks for writing. Um, to answer your question, no, we do not have a set ball limit to carry out with us. However, we have a paddock and we're only allo allowed eight balls in there at the time. Um, but it's pretty amusing to watch the girls try to figure out which eight balls to carry, to keep in the paddock uh, we, out of their 20, 30, or 40 balls that they carry around with them. Uh, as far as your second question, um, how many balls can we keep on the rack? We try to keep in consideration to the other players um, how many balls they might have or we might have. So we try to just put two or three out on the rack at one time. Uh, anyway, thanks again for writing. We appreciate those questions, but please sign your name. We'd like to mention you on the air. If you have a question you'd like to ask of a pro, send it to Ask the Pros in care of the PWBA, 7171 Cherryvale Boulevard, Rockford, Illinois, 61112, or use the World Wide Web at pwba.com. Right now, let's go to our Jan Schmidt, who's standing by with a special guest. Thanks, Leandra. I'm with Doug Stannard, President and CEO of AMF Bowling. Doug, AMF sponsors this wonderful event. Are you happy with the tournament this year? Jen, we couldn't be happier. This is our second year of sponsoring the tournament, and we look forward to renewing that sponsorship next year. It's been a great tournament in all respects. The bowling's been great. The competitors have been wonderful. The PWBA has done its usual fantastic job, and of course, Samstown is a co-sponsor of the greatest casino in Las Vegas. Uh, we just couldn't be happier, and I'm pleased to announce tonight that with our renewed sponsorship next year, we'll be bringing the prize fund up to $200,000, which may be the biggest or certainly the second largest prize fund for the women next year. Wow, I may have to reconsider my retirement there. Why did AMF and you choose to throw so much support toward women's bowling? It's very simple for us. We think women in sports in general, and particularly bowling, is a group of, uh, of active participants and real athletes uh, and as a class particularly bowling again they're under appreciated in our view and under supported and under marketed we say it is a huge commercial opportunity for our company and we would invite all kinds of commercial businesses particularly consumer product businesses to take advantage of this opportunity it's really an untapped gold mine and that's our reason for it we think it's an opportunity for AMF and putting all that aside it's really just the right thing to do Thanks, Doug. On behalf of all the players on tour, we thank AMF. Thank you very much, Jen. Well, of course, winning the money is a big part of bowling, but at this tournament, there's something unique going on. Local artist Phil McKinney, who is a sporting illustrator, is providing each of the competitors with a personalized sketch. Very talented man, and the players look forward to receiving their artwork. Okay, here's Donald Mansfield's name. He's the winner from Dover, Delaware. Up in Richmond, Virginia, we're going to pick the third bowling center for the Bud Frame Hall of Fame tournament. Pearl Keller has dug deep and has picked up. Well, it's the same one. Pick us another one. We have Bentonville Bowling Center, Bentonville, Arkansas. We'll be back with the action. And the action includes Anne Marie Dugan against Dee Dee Davidson. Anne Marie Dugan, number three qualifier. Dee Dee Davidson is the number two qualifier. It's our first chance to look at a lefty when she steps up. Anne Marie Dugan defeated Carolyn Dorn Ballard. As you look at her earlier score against Dee Dee Davidson, she defeated Carolyn Dorn Ballard 235 to 222 and starts off with a soft strike. That's the kind of strikes we saw at the beginning of last match out of Anne Marie, barely touching the head pin, but they're carrying. Now our first opportunity to look at Dee Dee Davidson. She's from Woodland Hills, California. As I said, the first of two lefties in this telecast, the other being Dana Miller Mackey.
some of the other finishers in the tournament. Julie Gardner, great performance. She really held up under pressure. Tish Johnson, eighth top ten finish this year. And Jeannie Nakarado, if you're wondering where she's been, no, she hasn't been bowling. It's only her fifth tournament this year, but three top ten finishes. Jeannie taking some time at home, taking care of her personal life. I can certainly understand that. Living on the road, it's hard to pay the bills, keep the family together, even do the laundry. some back problems that Dee Dee Davidson has and she would like to thank her acupuncturist Dr. Shen Su who's keeping her on the road. Back to back strikes for Dee Dee Davidson. And now Anne Marie Dugan is stepping up hopefully for her second strike. So her best finish was in Huntsville, Alabama on the screen just a moment ago. Maybe her best finish will also be here in Richmond, Virginia. And Marie Dugan opening with a pair of strikes. I mentioned earlier the different type of line she was playing. It's not quite as drastic tonight as it has been or was yesterday. But she, she's much more closed at the line. She's playing very direct to the pocket for Anne Marie. She likes to open up in the front part of the lane. This is something she's worked on. It's very impressive that she can come out here and make a show in a major. Playing a different shot than she's used to. You know, she made almost a grimace when she released that shot, but everything worked out okay. And now Dee Dee Davidson is looking to join just a handful of other bowlers who have won more than one title in 1998. And that would be Leanne Barrett, Alita Sell, Kim Adler, Marianne DeRupo, and Carol G. Montero. A lot of two-time winners this year. And I'm seeing a lot of strikes here. We had a chance to speak with Dee Dee Davidson earlier about being off the past few weeks due to an injury, and did it help her? Well, it certainly didn't help me physically because I was out for three weeks, but um, I think mentally it did because uh, two weeks prior, the left-handers seemed to be having a little bit of a difficulty out there, and uh, so it didn't seem like I was missing too much action those two weeks. And so I came in pretty fresh to this tournament and did um, extremely well considering the circumstances. the strangest strike I've ever seen. <laughs> this shot starting to come in late. 7-10 standing. Whoa. Oh. Take them both out. The crowd was enjoying the replay. So back, back here into the house. And I think that may have distracted Anne Marie. She was up poised, ready to bowl, and... The crowd kind of roared when they saw the replay again. That one coming up light, leaving that two pin. 16th year on tour, 15 national and 20 regional titles. 19 caches this year for Anne Marie. She, she's really having a good, consistent year if you play in a lot more conditions. After the three-bagger, it's a spare for Anne-Marie Dugan. For Dee Dee Davidson, it's four in a row. Down by 11 pins. See, that's what bothers me about this sport, Lisa Wagner. You bowl three strikes and a spare, and you're trailing by 11? Well, I don't think she's too worried about it right now. She's hitting the pocket pretty consistently here. And she looks good tonight. Back on track. If you're just joining us, I'm Leandra Riley along with Jan Schmidt and Lisa Wagner here at the AMF Gold Cup in Richmond, Virginia. You're looking now at Dee Dee Davidson as she steps up in the fifth frame ahead by 11. If she continues this string of strikes, she could be eligible for the $50,000 that MasterCard is giving for someone who bowls a perfect game on TV. Continues for Dee Dee Davidson. Well, it really is remarkable. You see, 19 career 300s. As you mentioned, uh, the back problem she's been having. She was actually in an accident in Rockford, and that took her out of commission, having a lot of back problems. And that acupuncture really helped. It's interesting. She found that acupuncturist. His nickname is Dee Dee. <laughs> the last 300 that Dee Dee 
Rold was in the Visionary Classic in Jacksonville, Florida. 300s are, are not, uh, not foreign to D. So far tonight, it's not too foreign either. She's perfect and smiling about it. Six bagger for Dee Dee Davidson and a 31 pin edge over Anne Marie Dugan, who has had strikes in five of six frames, or sorry, four of five frames, with just one spare. Now, normally we take a commercial break at this point, but we're going to stick around because Dee Dee Davidson is on such a perfect roll. A little bit of a half pocket 10 pin for Anne Marie. She's going to change balls again. Sorry, missed the 10 pin the last time. See, she won that first title 15 years ago, 1983. That was the first event she entered as a pro, and she was the first woman to win her first event turning pro. I remember that tournament well. Uh, she was a, a, just a kid coming out. There are a lot of us kids out there, but she was, she was so young and just took the tournament by it just it knocked everything down. It was just amazing. And, uh, you know, what you were talking about, the line that she's playing tonight, she used to play that really well. People don't remember that. Well, she said, I haven't played it, and I haven't seen her play it since pre-resin. Before resin equipment came out, when we had urethane, everybody was playing that line, and, and some of us, myself, were pointing the ball really hard toward the pocket. But since resin, she hasn't been able to play that because there hasn't been enough conditioner. Dee Dee Davidson's career earnings have her 18th on the all-time list. The string continues, seven in a row. Oh, my. The X signs are flying. They're counting them over there. They're putting them up. That's seven. Wow. Now she's starting to feel the pressure. <laughs> a little more pressure than when Michelle Feldman did it because now there's $50,000 at stake. Yeah, that was too bad that... Um, Michelle Feldman wasn't able to take advantage of that because it wasn't the policy then, but it's the policy now. And no one's done it since MasterCard's put the money up, but maybe tonight's the night they pay. An eight-bagger for Dee Dee Davidson. The X's string along. So maybe it's destiny that Carolyn did not win that last match because otherwise she would have had an eight-bagger against her again. Carolyn may never show up again if that would have happened. Well, Anne Marie's going to still keep striking. She can still go off the page for 259. Let me see if Dee Dee goes off the page. <laughs> 300. <laughs> You're getting good at that. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Tempin again. I know Anne Marie wanted to express uh, to Jim Lee and Daryl Ryder, Stacy Ryder's father, that she's thinking of them. Keep up good spirits, and she hopes they're getting better. You know that year, 1983, when you remember Anne Marie Dugan winning, that was also the year she was named Rookie of the Year. She came out storming, didn't she? And she just really has had a great career. That happened again last year. Lisa, your namesake, another Lisa, came out and won her first tournament. I believe that was Lisa Bishop. Won the opener in Terre Haute, her first uh, event as a professional. <laughs> Went on to be rookie of the year. Still spinning, but... Well, she's just tr trying to get out of the way here, I yeah. think. Filling some frames. Letting Dee Dee have the last two to take her time and uh, see if she can throw just four more. We're moving to the edge of our seats now. Oh, well, I'm, I'm nervous. nervous. Both. Oh boy, we could be seeing a rich woman in Richmond, Virginia. I'll tell you what, she only came back out because she was concerned she was dropping too low in the basic merit points and had, or basic points and had to get out here and, uh, and bowl a tournament and look at this. And the point standings, she had slipped down to 20th just because she wasn't out here entering events. This is for her ninth in a row. It's over. After eight in a row, beautiful bowling by Dee Dee Davidson. 
Six eight. She made an aggressive shot. Drove hard. And not an easy spare. Yeah, but it it really doesn't matter at this right. point in the match. She's already won it. So after eight in a row, an open frame in the ninth. Still leads by 39, and Anne Marie's, you know, patting her on the shoulder. You can see the camaraderie. Anne Marie can't catch her. Well, well that was that was exciting. It was. I said, Let me tell you. I'll I, tell you. My palms are sweating. <laughs> Dee Dee's sponsors, Dan and Wanda, do it are probably sitting there going, "Oh, I mean, they were probably rooting more than anybody else at that point." And things are breaking down for Dee Dee Davidson. And Dee Dee Davidson also wanted to say hi to Mary and Dan Barrett. Those are Leanne Barrett's parents. Dan Barrett underwent a double lung transplant a couple of shows ago. We told you about Leanne leaving early to catch up with her dad. And so far, Knockwood, things are going well for the Barrett family. Also, Nikki Giannoulis' dad, George, also just underwent surgery. She wanted to express her concerns there. Players really come together as a family when, when there's tragedy or, or an emergency uh, strikes because we're the only support we have when we're out here for eight weeks on end. Absolutely, and it's, it's family here. So no strikes off the page for Dee Dee Davidson as she defeats Anne-Marie Dugan. Bowling at 2.55, and Maria quickly knocks them all down. And we will be back in just a moment. We will recap the action here and get ready for our championship match. But first, these messages. Welcome back to the AMF Gold Cup in Richmond, Virginia. On the last drawing, we made a little bit of a mistake. You're allowed to have double winners from the same bowling center. And the next one was Dover Rama Lanes from Dover, Delaware. And we're gonna pick a bowler from there right now. The bowler is Bill DeVita. Bill DeVita, you're going to St. Louis. And the other one, Bentonville Bowling Center in Bentonville, Arkansas. We will be getting your name next. Here it is, John Johnson. John Johnson, you're the next person, the fourth one to have a chance for $1 million. Back to the championship match, back to Jan and Leandra. All right, let's recap all of the action in the first match. Carolyn Doran Ballard defeated Michelle Feldman 233 to 228. She moved on up the ladder and was defeated herself by Anne Marie Dugan 235 to 222. But then Anne Marie Dugan ran into Dee Dee Davidson and lost 255 to 216. And that set up the no-nonsense shot of the day. Dee Dee Davidson had the front eight strikes. Pressure square on her shoulders, going for that $50,000 bonus. This is a ninth frame shot. Throws it great, ball drives hard. Not to be, the 6-8 stands. And goodbye to $50,000, but that was our no-nonsense shot of the day. And that sets the stage now for our championship match between Dee Dee Davidson and Dana Miller Mackey. And the competition will begin right after this. Welcome back to the AMF Gold Cup championship match between Dee Dee Davidson and Dana Miller Mackey. Both of our bowlers are left-handed. Dana Miller Mackey, the number one qualifier, has opted to bowl first. She hails from Albuquerque, New Mexico. As you can see, she's a 17-year pro. It's been a long wait, but worth it for Dana Miller Mackey. She opens with a strike here in the championship game. Dana likes to run those shots out. I think Pearl Keller better move over there. <laughs> now in match play, 213 to 194. That was rather at the U.S. Open back in 1993, these two met. And it was Dee Dee Davidson who prevailed. Bit of an errant shot sent that way left. Okay. 
what a contrast that was from opening with an eight bagger in the other game to this. Probably hung on her hand just a little bit too long. The ball just squirted off to the left a little bit, got in the oil out there and just did not roll up enough. Got the pin count, so it's eight pins for Dee Dee Davidson in this first frame versus the strike for Donna Milamecki. Well, pressure's off of Dee Dee early this match, or pressure could be on her now as she trails. Five titles, two of them majors. Queens in 91, U.S. Open in 93. Of course, that was against Anna Milamek. She always comes st strong in the majors, Lisa. Yes, she does. I think her focus is a little bit more intense in those tournaments. That's the Dee Dee Davidson we're used to watching. The one who clears the deck. <laughs> 14 titles for Dana Miller Mackey. Her last one was at the Visionary Bowling Products Classic in Jacksonville, Florida. Always a lot of pressure on you, especially she's an AMF staff member, AMF team A lot of pressure on Dana to perform tonight. I think she likes pressure, judging by that. Here in 10th place, we have Cheryl Daniels. She was in third at one time, had a disastrous last nine games. Kim Adler, two titles in 1998. 12th, in 12th place, Lisa Bishop. She's our reigning Ebonite Rookie of the Year. Buffy Price, an original player, making the top 18. And Leanne Barrett wants to say hello to her dad. She hopes he keeps on improving. She led by 22 tens before that shot as you look at her husband, Steve Mackey. He feels a bit of the pressure, too, because he works for AMF. So pressure's on both sides of the family here. Trying to take a deep breath. Dee Dee stepping up, wanting to make sure we said hi to Lori and Dave, her parents, mom and dad, and also her brother, Joe. 209 plus, her average on 17 and 18. Yeah. Not to be, seven stays. Not happy with that shot. You can see by her reaction. There's her match play record, 11 and 7. She's going to try to clean it up, changing balls to shoot or spare. Was and distracted. Something, something distracted her. going to see that uh, she, oh, look at that. She knows that it was an errant shot. She's, she got a good break and just left a seven pin. Change into a spare ball, cross lane, shoot. She's down by 32 with an open frame, just knocking down eight pins in the first, getting the strike in the second, and now the spare in the third as Dana Miller Mackey sits there in perfection with a turkey. You know, Dee Dee told us an interesting story. She thought it was a good omen coming in here uh, after qualifying. She said last year, Dee Dee missed the cut here, the top 18, by one pin. Alita Sill won the tournament. This year, Alita Sill missed the cut by one pin. So Dee Dee thought, hey, you know, maybe that means I'm going to win the tournament. Win. <laughs> Odd logic, but all right. That's for me. That didn't work for Dee Dee. Lisa's, Lisa, is this the same lady we just saw throw the front eight? Well, I tell you, that's what pressure does to you sometime. I think she's, she's getting a little bit tentative here and, and not letting it just get off her hand cleanly at all. It's, she's hitting up on it late, and it just doesn't look too good right now. Only gets one, and for the second time in this match, Dee Dee Davidson has left an open frame. We'll, we'll be back. Welcome back to the championship match of the AMF Gold Cup. I'm Leandra Riley along with Jan Schmidt and Lisa Wagner. You're looking at Dana Miller Mackey, who has three in a row, maybe on her way to $50,000 in that MasterCard. Four in a row for Dana Miller Mackey, number one seed, and nothing but perfection through four. Dee Dee Davidson trails by 57 pins. She is the number two seed. And Dana was praying just to make it through this tournament with the bad wrist, was worried about what was going to happen if she'd have to withdraw. 
I know we've all had injuries. Lisa, how do you deal with, how do you deal with injuries out here? Well, you, uh, you have to do a lot of warm-up exercises before you start. I think that's very, very important. And I know Dana does take about an hour, uh, like yourself, Jan, mm -hmm. I, I believe, to stretch out and to prepare yourself so that you don't injure yourself even worse. You know, something else she mentioned was the icing. And she said the older she gets, the more she needs to ice. She stayed up till 1 o'clock in the morning a couple of nights just icing and icing. Her particular injury involves the wrist, either a bone spur or bone chips or something. This is obviously Dee Dee Davidson, who has injuries of her own, and those include the back. It's very important. Icing is critical because it takes down the inflammation. I know uh, Carolyn Doran Ballard, my past roommate, was always teasing me, just fill the tub, Dan, just get in it. <laughs> Soak the whole body. Now Dee Dee's happy. A strike in the second and a strike in the fifth, but two open frames to go with it. Well, she told us she pressed last night, the first game, threw a bad game, and then said, hey, wait a minute, I had a good week. What have I got to lose? It looks to me like that's what's happening now or at the beginning of this match. Exactly. I don't think that her just going off the sheet here with great shots and, and possibly strikes is out of the question. And this is the woman who took three weeks off and just, you know, came out to get some points. So the fact that she threw, you know, eight in a row in the last game, the fact that she's a number two seed is a testament to, uh, you know, her natural abilities because she admitted, you know, she's a little bit out of shape because she had to nurse the bad back. Well, she's getting quite a few points this week. It should secure her spot in the basic, for the basic doubles tournament. And you can see in the foreground the beautiful trophy that is at stake in addition to the prize money here at the AMF Gold Cup at Hanover Lanes in Richmond, Virginia. Dana Miller Mackey has five in a row. 37 career 300 games. I can't imagine that. It continues. Earlier we spoke with Dana Miller Mackey. Does it help her when she has Steve Mackey, her husband, with her? Well, he thought for a while that he was a bad omen because I seemed to drop off every time he appeared, but um, he thought I was trying too hard. I don't think it is. I, I bowl well when my family members are here, my mother, my father, my brothers, and when Steve's here, I bowl really well, and I think it helps to have somebody there. Um, it's not so much for the bowling aspect of it, but just the support, and um, sometimes, you know, you get hungry or you you know, just need that little bit of extra encouragement, and I seem to bowl well when Steve's around. And you are looking now at Steve Mackey as he watches his wife knock down seven in a row. 300 is not out of the realm of possibility for her. Not at all. Uh, Dana has two this year in tournaments, Jacksonville and Orlando. As we look now at Dee Dee Davidson. Now she looks relaxed. Good roll on that ball. She's just trying to finish out a very, very good week and a good year for Dee Dee. And here we're going to see our Ask a Pro talent tonight, Shanna Ray in 15th, and our international entry, Paulina Alto from Finland. Allison Alming and Brenda Edwards, her first full year on tour. I'm glad she's starting to relax and show some of her natural form as we go back to Dana Miller Mackey, who leads by 88 pins, but that's the moot point. The reality here is she could be eligible for not only the $28,000 first prize from the Gold Cup, but the $50,000 bonus for MasterCard. What a payday. Just past the $500,000 earning mark. And it ends in the eighth for Dana Miller Mackey. What a beautiful run it was by this woman. Dee Dee Davidson provided the excitement in the last match. Wow. What a tournament this has been. I'll tell you, that's a huge amount of pressure. Yes. You can see the extra finger hole there. Dana no longer using that. Used to put the next finger in the ball. Feels she's getting the ball down the lane better without using that extra hole. 
She has changed her grip a little bit in the past. She went to some forward thumb pitch, and she said that that took a lot of pain out of her hand. It's interesting. Sometimes you keep going farther back, thinking you'll get out easier, but what happens then is you squeeze. It puts a lot more stress on the wrist. Back in strike form for Dana Miller Mackey. We will be back to recap all of the action, but first, we'll take these commercial messages. Welcome back. You are looking at Dee Dee Davidson as she steps up in the ninth frame off a strike in the eighth. Her maximum score is 2-2. Crowd still very much into this. They like Dee Dee Davidson, a very popular bowler out here. She is a lot of fun, always very friendly. And they like listening to her sing uh, karaoke after the <laughs> event. Oh. Another open frame for Dee Dee, but she knows it's over. She finishes second. And she knows that she's got $15,000 to sing all the karaoke she wants with tonight. That looked more like the last match there. I, you know what? That would be hard to regroup after that. Get that close to the... $50,000. Oh, your nerves oh. just have to be jumping. So after bowling a 255 in her first match, which was the third match of the stepladder finals, her maximum score now is 170. Humbles you, doesn't it? Hmm. Well, this sport does that. <laughs> I think Didi was glad to have a good week after the back problems that she's had. Absolutely. I think it's just a big relief to her to get back out here in bowling. She said that she was mentally fresh coming out here this week after being home for a few weeks. It's hard to come back from an injury. I know back injuries. I know all about them. And it's very hard to, to be aggressive out there and not worry about the back. So she maxed out at 170 as Dana Miller Mackey steps up and takes care of the uh, paperwork, I guess you could say. She has to bowl out the past few frames, although she doesn't need to score. Dana Miller Mackey. Her last win, Jacksonville, February of this year. The strikes continue to fall. Ah, but one spare in the eighth frame. A 278 maximum score. Wow. Doesn't get any better than this for Dana Miller Mackey. Husband here, AMF staff member, AMF Gold Cup, another major. There is Steve wondering how they're going to celebrate with $28,000 tonight. I can think of a lot of ways. Well, I think he's saying, oh, man, if it wasn't for that one frame, we could be yeah, celebrating with $78,000. <laughs> of 1998. We'll be back with an interview with our champion, but first we're going to step aside for a timeout. The AMF Gold Cup has been brought to you by AMF Bowling Worldwide, the largest owners and operators of bowling centers in the world and one of the leading makers of bowling products. AMF always means fun by Budweiser and Bud Light, the official beers of bowling. By MasterCard, there are some things in life money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by LensCrafters, helping people see better one hour at a time. We promised you that you'd get an opportunity to hear from our AMF Gold Cup champion, Dana Miller Mackey, but before we get comments from her, Let's take care of some of the prizes. And we begin with our senior vice president from AMF, Larry Kin, who's going to make the check presentation. Larry? 
Dana, on behalf of AMF, I'd like to hand you this check for $28,000. Thanks for the thrill. Your husband tells me it's the largest check you've ever gotten in your career. Thank you. Thank you. And now let's bring in Paul Wallachek, who has the trophy presentation. From AMF Worldwide, we present this trophy. We're all so happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. And Dana, you can set that trophy down right here. And we're now going to bring in Phil McKinney, the sporting illustrator, who has something to give you. Dana, congratulations. And here's a sketch I made of you while you were in action tonight. Hope you like it. Thank you. Nice morning. And while we take a look at that sketch that you're holding up there, let's bring in our Jan Schmidt. I know she's got a lot of questions for you. Well, we all know the first question has to be, when did you start thinking $50,000 from MasterCard? <laughs> about the time I missed that shot, <laughs> I, I thought, um, don't think about it. Just keep looking at your mark and um, just keep going. Just keep going. And, um, you know, that's the way it goes. And I, I even as I said, Okay, Lord, you know, I will share it with these girls. I will. <laughs> but I really, but anyway, I just to make a good shot. So, how did it feel to win your AMF staff member AMF tournament? They've been a great sponsor. How did it make you feel to win here? Absolutely. I, I, there isn't a description for it. Thank you so much to AMF, my sponsor. The Nighthawk, way to go, Doan. That was the right ball, right choice, right drilling. Um, Thank you to Dale Namala who told me just hit your mark, keep your eyes on your mark. Um, to my husband, thanks for, for all your patience. Uh -oh. Thank you. It's melting down, I know it's melting down. Your last title was Jacksonville earlier this year. How does this compare to the title you won so long ago? So it seems. Oh, it's, this is this is just wonderful. I'm, it's a dream come true to be an AMF staff person to begin with it's a very much of an honor to be on their staff and to win here in one of their tournaments is an, an absolute godsend and I, I thank God for it how did the wrist hold up tonight for you it held up pretty good in the warm-ups it was starting to bother me so I went back and, and taped it up tighter um, and I thought no not now not now please and uh, it was fine when I was I was too nervous I was trying to get one foot in front of the other so <laughs> I forgot about the wrist actually <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right, because it held up long enough, because you are the AMF Gold Cup champion. Congratulations to you, Dana Miller-Mackey. So once again, here's a reminder that David Perkopile, Donald Manfield, John Johnson, and Bill DeVita are all part of our Bud Friend Championship. They get the trip to St. Louis, Missouri, and a chance for a million dollars. A reminder also that the Brunswick Women's World Open is coming up in Lake Zurich, Illinois. Be sure to join us then. It is coming up just before Halloween, so you don't want to miss that. For Jan Schmidt, I'm Leandra Riley, along with Lisa Wagner, congratulating our Dana Miller-Mackey, the AMF Gold Cup champion here in Richmond, Virginia. A job well done by a well-deserving woman. Great bowling tonight, ladies. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.